Welcome to an introduction for Excel by Frank Rust. In this lesson, we'll learn about relative cell addresses. You will also learn how to enter data into cells. You'll learn how to enter formulas into cells. You'll learn how to copy and to paste cell contents. In, ad in addition, we'll introduce you to functions and to the data analysis tool. This is a very important lesson. All of the following lessons on this CD are based on the assumption that you have completed this lesson. This is what Excel looks like. It's a spreadsheet and it has little boxes or cells all throughout it. It has columns A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. And it has rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Any cell can be identified by its address which is the intersection of the column and the row. In this case I've clicked on cell C3 because it's in column C row 3. The, the address usually appears here in this name box which is above uh, the letter A. Let me click over here, say to J7 or J8, I guess that is. You can see in this ad, in the name box it says J8, and I am in in column J, row 8. Let me click again in cell C3, and I'll type in a number. Let's type in the number oh four, and now notice that as I type in, not only does the number appear in the cell that's addressed, but it also appears up here in the formula bar. Now I'm going to press in the second number. Now notice down here it's on the left side because I haven't pressed enter yet. When I press enter, it will go over to the right side of the cell. That's only true with numbers. Letters will stay on the left side of the cell. Notice also that when I that when I hit enter, the next cell down became highlighted. Now on some of your spreadsheets, it may be the next cell over. The default and the one I like to use is where it goes down. Uh, and let me type in another number here. I'll type in the number 67. And again, it says 67 up here above the C. It says 67 here. Now once I press enter, the 67 will move over here and my cursor will go down to the next cell. Let's see if that happens. Here I press enter and there it went down. So far, what Excel has shown in each of the cells is exactly what we've typed in. But sometimes we want it to do some calculating for us. Let me show you an example of that. Let me go over here. I'll click in this cell. You can see this is cell D3 because it's in column D, row 3. And this time I'm going to press an equal sign. That's the way I tell Excel that I'm going to start calculating. You can see that it also added these characters to my uh, spreadsheet. This is a little different. This is XP. It's a little different on older versions, but it, it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay, I press the equal sign, and now I'm going to press C3, which is a cell address. And notice that in this case, a blue box will come around C3. That doesn't happen in earlier versions. And it's a nice feature, but it, it just is a visual guide. And now I'll press a plus sign, and then I'll say 2. Now you might think that what this is going to do is take what's ever in C3 and add 2 to it. Let's see what it does. Ah, you're probably saying that's exactly what it did. It took the number that was in C3. I'll click back on here. Here's the formula I put in. I put in equal C3 plus 2. But this is what shows in the cell is 47. But it really isn't correct to think that what it's doing is taking what's ever in C3 and adding 2 to it. This is where the term relative cell addresses come in. 
what it really is doing is it's taking the cell that's one cell to its left and adding two to it. In this case, that happens to be C3. But watch what happens when I copy these contents. I'm going to go Control. I'm holding down my Control button and pressing my C button. As I do that, it will copy the contents that's in that cell. Now I'm going to go down here to cell D4 and paste it. And you probably are saying, well, he should be getting 47 again because that's what's in C3 plus 2 is still 47. But that's not what we'll get. We'll get what's one cell to the left plus the 2. See, we got 69. And this, even though we copied C3 plus 2, that was a relative address. So when it came down here, it knew the cell to the left was C4. So it put C4 plus 2, which is 69. I probably should have mentioned, while I did my copying by pressing uh, Control, holding it down, and pressing C to copy, when I pasted the number in D4, I pressed down Control and pressed V. I don't know how V gets the paste, but that's what you do. You hold down Control and press the V to on your keyboard for it to paste. Now that we've done this wild thing, let's try something really wild. Let's go over here to cell E3, and this time we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply the 45 in C3. Oh, let's multiply it by 2. So what I'm going to do, since I'm going to do calculating, I'm going to press my equal sign that tells Excel I want you to do something. Don't just write down what I type in. And now, instead of typing in C3, which I could do, but another way is I could just click on C3. And I get these little ants marching around the cell, but I get it'll enter C3 in this cell for me. Now I'm going to press the multiply sign. The multiply sign in Excel is a, a, a postru um, the asterisk, excuse me, the asterisk, which is Shift-8 on your keyboard. And now I'll press the number 2, and this should be 45, or whatever two cells to my left, uh, times 2. And I get 90. Now if I wanted to, I could copy this, control C, and type here, and I'm not going to get 90. I'll get 2 times 67, which would be 134, I believe. The moral of the story is that there's two ways that you can put a cell address in a cell. One way is to type in the cell address, like C3. Another way is just to click on the cell, and its address will go in the cell that you're typing in automatically. Now I want to clear this data before we go on. This is the way I can highlight all the numbers that I have. I'm going to go here to say C2, press my mouse button down and keep it down. And now as I'm keeping it down I'm going to move my hand like this. And notice that all the numbers become darkened except for the first number I pressed in. Let me do that again. I'm clicking on C2 and then I'm holding down my mouse button. I'm going to go like this and highlight all the nu numbers. And now I'm just going to press delete and they'll all go away. For the next exercise, I'm going to have some different numbers, and I'm going to make a smaller screen so, um, so that it's easier for you to see. So I'll only be showing you part of the screen, but do realize that it's part of this whole screen is what would be on your computer.